So this is an is a narcissistic person in a nutshell. I just had this image, uh, this this vision, this thought that I just needed to address this right now in case somebody needs to hear this. If you're a sensitive empath HSP and you need to hear this, you need to have support immediately regarding narcissistic abuse. You've you have been bullied, abused again, or you know, attacked in any way by a narcissistic person. So they always create the issue. They always have the innate problem, the issue, the trauma, negative energy, demonic entities within them. And you know, it, it really doesn't have anything to do with you. You just happened to be there for some reason and they attacked you in some way and try to protect the, their pain on you. And usually they do it inten intentionally. They, they also can act by not being aware of these issues. So many people are not aware that they carry any types of trauma within them or demonic entities, for example. So they might not be aware of it which makes it even more harder to understand and to be tolerating that treatment, which is completely wrong. It is abuse. It is a serious matter. When you're playing with somebody's health and mental health, you're not respecting the other person in, a, in any way or their boundaries or their feelings or, or their emotions or anything. And you know, that is not a way to treat anyone. But your job as a sensitive empath, highly sensitive being again, is to always protect your energy, your health, your mental health, your physical health, your home, your space, your life. It's your duty to do it and take responsibility and accountability from yourself, your health, and know that you are always worthy of respect and normal treatments from others because you also have a human worth. You are not an object, you are not a toy to play with. Your feelings, your emotions, your health, your life matter. Everything about you matters. So you are not a joke, you are a healer. You are needed in this world. Because like I've been saying, we can encounter these out of the blue and everywhere. Because apparently, from my own experiences, from my point of view, these can be everywhere. So we might not always know where they are and where they are not. So that is why it's crucial to have those self-care routines to be holding on to your own truth, your mental health, physical health, your sanity, your space, giving the safe space to yourself every day when you start yourself, start your day in the morning. It's good to have a morning routine in place where you're cultivating peace and your own energy and grounding. And, you know, energy protection also has to do with you, for example, praying, meditating, journaling, taking a walk in nature, taking deep breaths, doing, you know, breath exercises, um, for example, do yin yoga. You need to calm your, your nervous system down. You need to be able to, to act from that healthy, stable, you know, energy. Being a God's chosen one, you know, life is definitely not easy because, you know, we're the light bringers, we're the healers, um, but we're not here to be treated like we are punching bags. So that is why it's important to be doing these things. Because it's not worth it to be hurt all the time if these people attack you and hurt you in any way and disrespect you because apparently you know they can reside anywhere like for example you make a phone call or 
you go to the post office and you know there's a rude toxic person there um who should serve you of course they should serve you with normal kindness and respect but instead they they pour their 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 bad day or their their issues whatever it is or they are just narcissistic they, they pour this negative energy on you because they cannot handle it themselves and you emit this this nurturing and this mothering energy so they think it's okay subconsciously because this can be such a torment if it happens day after day and maybe several several times a day even so this is why it's important to be, be protecting your energies your health your life everything your children everything because how can you function how can you ever live your life and express yourself and set your boundaries and and you know demand respect when you need to and, and stand up for yourself and communicate with others if they don't let you do that but when they don't let you be yourself when they don't respect you and your boundaries and your health and everything that comes to you like a normal person would this is very toxic energy and they are acting like a narcissist because this is so important to understand that when we encounter these people especially where we're not supposed to be encountering them and it can create a shocked effect or raise your ptsd from the past for example flashes flashes of your childhood trauma experiences for example it is a serious matter it is so cruel when you are a trauma survivor you are a narcissistic abuse survivor you are, you are a childhood trauma survivor or something something like that or or you have just experienced heavy things anyway in your life so <clears throat> when people are not kind to you and they treat you in this abusive way it's just important to remember that it's about them it's not, it's not about you it's not your responsibility and you have every right to be angry to express yourself because you cannot be yourself you cannot be living your life you cannot become empowered you cannot be stepping into your own power that is authentic and honest that makes you you with your feelings and thoughts and thoughts and self-expressions with everything that you are that god has created you to be so you have nothing to apologize for you are here to be you and fulfill god's mission for you and you are not here to be suffering just because these demonic entities are crawling around trying to devour you and your precious energy and also we have to keep in mind this has been a big powerful life lesson and realization for me personally and that is why i want to share with share it with you also now that when we when we encounter these these beings these these people we have to keep in mind that we don't want the negative energy we don't need it we don't deserve it it's only toxic and draining us our job our mission is to be love and light to be in love and light to be in god's god's energy every day that is always within us we always need to feed that connection that relationship with god with ourselves with the universe you know in, in that loving surrendering way also the fact that apparently these people if we keep on encountering them everywhere for example like we cannot go anywhere or they are working at these professions or, or volunteering at these these uh, tasks that should be supportive and helpful and offering a safe space for us that we could trust for example somebody volunteering at a helpline 
for suicidal people, for example. So it is a big duty that requires a lot of, for example, um, being calm. You have to be calm when you are doing that work, but also you have to be very empathetic. So if this happens to you or, the, or this has happened to you, because this has happened to me too many times, and it's not worth it that my body <clears throat> and my mind would immediately go into this shock mode, you know, that I would be sort of paralyzed and have these um, physical symptoms, for example, and, and this, this overwhelming stress, you know, overstimulation and, and all of that. So it's not worth it, but it can happen so easily to us sensitive empaths and highly sensitive people. But this is this is again why we have to protect our own our own energy and still be able to express ourselves so that you know we're not taking any shame or fear or guilt in that situation you know so again it can it can also help if you always keep in mind and remember and practice this this mindset and and the fact that you are a separate entity from them. That you are the positive one. You are the loving, caring one with the open heart. And it's it's not anything to be ashamed about. It is a gift. They should be respectful towards you and have normal manners. Treat you like a human being with feelings and thoughts and emotions. We are not robots here. We are not objects. So I'm very stunned about this that it's been happening even, that I've been witnessing it over and over again. When I have had to give feedback to companies, for example, and stand up for myself and speak my truth. It is just that, you know, very often, you know, as I've been saying in my videos and posts, that, you know, people don't understand as sensitive beings, people don't understand what deep feelings we can have and thoughts and emotions and all of that they're not like us so it's impossible apparently for them to put themselves in our shoes what it feels like to be a trauma survivor for example what it, what it feels like to go through severe psychological abuse childhood trauma and still be able to be here and alive breathing but you have to value all of that within yourself. Love yourself, take care of yourself. And so remind yourself that you are just here to be enjoying life, you know, and, and to, of course, do good things. But anyway, remember that if you encounter these toxic people where it is a shock for you to experience it, where they are supposed to be kind to you, They are clearly in the wrong place and they are not aligned with you. They are not your person. Whether it's your parents, your ex-boyfriend, girlfriend, your spouse, friend, co-worker, or just a random person on social media or wherever, um, you know, if you're seeking help, for example, with your trauma issues and this person is clearly being toxic to you and making it, it worse, making you feel worse and ashamed of yourself. Well, well clearly you're, you're dealing with a narcissist. So clearly they are in the wrong place completely. They should not be working where you need to help people. They should not be volunteering where you need to help and support people and where you should be kind and empathetic and listen to other people's issues, for example, to offer that safe space. And it's not our fault that these people don't know how to offer that safe space. But again, it's only our duty and responsibility to take account accountability in these situations and know our own value and worth and be ignoring, of course, as much as possible, but also 
taking some sort of action, like, for example, protecting your energy even more. And always validate yourself and your own feelings first. Know where you stand, hold on to your truth, because you have to, because you owe, owe it all to yourself, to your self-care, to actually feel the self-love within you, that you actually respect and love and accept yourself the way you are. Maybe do some cleansing practices for your aura and your chakra because your energy field also needs, of course, cleansing and attention at times. Going for a walk, for example, in nature is, is a good way to be grounding yourself and you know coming back to peace and always know the difference always recognize when you are being victimized again when, when you are being attacked by a narcissist because it's not worth it that you give any more energy or attention to that person so you have to cut off the power source not be their energy supply so say no once or ignore them set your boundary once and then go silent you don't owe them anything and they should not be treating you with disrespect you have said what you have said and that has to be enough so that is also a healthy boundary in itself and you're showing yourself that you actually value yourself and recognize your worth. Because, you know, as you might know, because you've gone through this, you learned the painful way. But the truth is that they will never look in the mirror what they have done wrong. They will just keep on attacking you and blaming you for everything. So whatever you do, but whenever you say no or set a boundary and they don't like it, they attack you, they belittle you, they invalidate you and your, your experience, your feelings and anything, everything. They don't take responsibility or accountability of their own behavior, which is again very immature to act that way. Especially if you have every right to be angry and express yourself as well, because you are human too. So they are basically de denying you being a human being. Because you always need to take care of your end. Because, like I already said now again, that you cannot become the strong, empowered, responsible adult who has a stable mental health, physical health, who takes care of themselves, who loves themselves, who accepts accepts themselves as they are completely and unapologetically but is also a kind person a high vibe person an amazing positive minded person who actually brings love and light and healing into this world that is your mission it's our mission to do that and it's from god so there is nothing wrong about it but devil is just trying to deceive us and attack us and lie to us all the freaking time but we just have to acknowledge it so i was saying that that is why it is crucial to always take care of your end first so that you can become become that stable adult that i just described because it a stable adult who knows their worth, loves themselves, honors themselves, values themselves, knows themselves, has their identity in place, knows how to treat themselves well and um, how to live that full life, you know, fulfilling God's mission. Also treats others well also treats others with, with respect normally so again it's a reminder and it's very simple but it can be a lot of work when you've been scapegoated 
for example, all your life you have childhood trauma, wounds within you, because you've been hurt and attacked by these people, these these toxic beings. You have been traumatized, which is not okay. It's not acceptable. So recognize the patterns. Recognize when you're being attacked and manipulated again, brainwashed, abused, disrespected. Recognize the patterns. Step away from it. Cut it off as soon as possible. Stand up for yourself. Express yourself. Ground yourself into peace and healing. It's not your fault in any way. It never was. Abuse is never the victim's fault. We all deserve to be treated normally with respect, to be heard, listened to, to have empathetic support, real loving, caring support from others. And so we should not be accepting anything less. It's very exhausting if you always need to demand for normal treatment and respect. So that is clearly a toxic narcissist that you're dealing with. If you feel exhausted when you just try to be heard normally and respected and communicate normally, because they will never do that. They will just keep ignoring you and hurting you and belittling you and invalidating you. Stop over explaining yourself when you don't need to. Remind yourself that you don't owe them anything. They don't know you. They have nothing to do with you. All they do is disrespect you. So you don't need to be inter interfered with that by that toxic energy. It's dangerous for you and your he your health and your life. So you need to just acknowledge it, recognize it, and just you know be ignoring. Stepping away, cutting off, nip it in the bud. Know your value and worth. If you need more help and support, grab my self-help book on Amazon, book a call with me one-on-one, -on -one, or you can also, of course, check out my freebies, my free ebook, for example, if you need immediate help and support. Remember that if you had once said to this abuser, this toxic person, that they cannot talk to you in that way when they are clearly attacking you, brainwashing you, trying to manipulate you, play with your feelings, emotions, thoughts, with your health again. They are violating your boundaries. They try to walk all over you. They try to practice that power over you again, that, that power and control. Where it, it, when, you know, it is coercive control. It is abuse. And your men mental health is important. You cannot be functioning without your mental health and physical health in this life. So if they don't respect you when, the, when you say to them, you cannot talk, talk to me like that, you're dealing with a narcissist. And again, you have to remember that, <clears throat> you know, if this happens again, that you don't smother yourself again because if you have to be smothering suppressing yourself and your soul again you're not able to have a healthy outlet for your pain to take care of yourself to be you know having your self love in place for example if you don't have that you know you don't have access to your inner peace and inner power so this is a very painful state to be in but this is why you have to remember that remember that you're not here to be smothered you're not here to be suppressed so you always need to pay attention to how you're feeling and you know be taking care of yourself and acting accordingly always learn to value them first and like I said, if you need more help and support, me and my work are here to help and support you to be really empowered and be healed and to be able to create a life that is 
normally stable, to have your identity discovered, you, you discover who you really are and what you're here to do and what your gifts and talents are and all of that. So my coaching program with my solution-based therapy is for that if you're interested in this longer commitment for three or six or nine months. So if you need empathetic help and support genuinely and honestly, don't be afraid to reach out, get in touch. And also notice fake apologies. A narcissistic person, a toxic person, an immature person, like I said, they cannot look in the mirror and take accountability and responsibility of how they treat others. They will never validate your feelings and emotions and thoughts and your rights, your boundaries and everything about you that makes you you. They are there in your life to destroy you, to hurt you, to abuse you, to have control and power over you. And so you don't need and you don't deserve to be their doll that they can play with. You're not supposed to be that. You are a person, a human, a human being, an amazing human being with deep feelings and emotions and, and value and worth. So I hope that you can stop overthinking and recognize the false apologies as well. And like, for example, if somebody right now in your life is supposed to be supporting you, let's say a best friend or a therapist, psychologist or a coach, whoever it is, but they are supposed to be there to help you and support you and offer you that safe space to open up that you can trust this person and be yourself around this person and speak your truth and, for example, share about your trauma, your life story, you know, these important but very painful issues that have happened to you without your, your choosing because you did not choose them. Especially if you have been a small child when they happen to you, like it's your childhood trauma, that you can scapegoat it. So the only way to be healing these issues, again, is to be recognizing them and changing the patterns. And remember and pay attention that fake apology usually sounds like, I'm sorry if you are feeling that way. It's not a real apology. It's invalidation, it's disrespect, it's abuse from this narcissistic person who is clearly not mature enough to take responsibility and accountability for hurting your feelings and violating your boundaries. They are saying, I'm sorry if you are feeling that way because they don't want to acknowledge your true feelings and emotions and thoughts in that situation. They don't want to be responsible. They are an immature little child within, even though they would be having an adult body. So beware and keep in mind and pay attention. If you really are exhausted right now and this video resonates with you and uh, my story, my message resonate with you and you feel that you could use some help and support, yeah, I'm here to definitely to give you that support and <clears throat> offer. I offer you that safe space to open up, that you have someone that you can talk to, we can have weekly calls, or if you're interested in joining my coaching program. And so, yeah, if you have any questions, you can always send me an email. I only reply, of course, to serious inquiries. <laughs> so anyway, if you're interested to see if we are a good fit and you're interested in having my help, just, you know, get in touch.